Hello everyone and welcome to this second video in our series of videos which examine the different functions of the Northern Ireland Assembly and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Assembly's legislative function. Now when it comes to the Assembly's legislative function essentially what we're talking about is its policy making role because legislation is one of the main instruments that political institutions use to create new policy. Now you've probably heard MLAs and ministers talking about bills and essentially a bill is just a proposal for a new law and it, it's not law yet a bill is just a proposal um, it could be brought forward by the executive or by the assembly it's scrutinized in the assembly if it passes that process it then goes to the queen and if the queen signs off on it it gets royal assent and then it becomes the law of the land now, in terms of the Assembly's role in all of this, the Assembly, it's helpful to think of its legislative function in terms of two components. So the Assembly has a reactive legislative role and a proactive legislative role. In terms of its reactive role, the clue is in the name. That deals with how the Assembly responds to, scrutinises, uh, criticises, comments on bills that have been brought forth by the Northern Ireland Executive. So those group of ministers who are outside the Assembly who sit in Stormont Castle. So you might have the Communities Minister, for example, who has an idea for how to better fund sporting organisations. So she draws up a bill and introduces it to the Assembly. When that bill is in the Assembly, so if it was introduced by the Communities Department, it will go to the Communities Committee. And that committee will undertake clause by clause scrutiny of that legislation, going through it in detail um, to see if there are any at weaknesses in the bill or if there are any areas where the bill could be improved and to do that you're not just the committees are not just relying on the expertise of their own MLAs they will hold evidence sessions during which they'll hear from stakeholders with an interest in the bill so they will invite academics experts um, charities NGOs if it's to do with sport they may hear from sporting personnel uh, and those people will be able to give their perspective on the bill and they will be able to advise on, for example, how the bill might be improved. And after that, the committee writes up a report and will give its verdict on the bill to the minister. And the minister can then respond to that report, for example, by amending the bill, by changing the bill to meet the committee's expectations. So in this way, the Assembly Committee and by extension, the Assembly is able to influence the content of bills, either by making recommendations that the minister can bring forward herself to the bill, or the committee chairperson might bring forth his own amendment to the bill on the floor of the assembly. And if that passes, the assembly has changed one aspect or several aspects of the bill. So that has to do with the assembly's reactive legislative role. But as I said, the assembly also has a proactive legislative role. And this has to do with the, the homegrown ideas or the homegrown bills that come from within the Assembly itself. So most of our legislation in Northern Ireland comes from the executive, it's sponsored by ministers, but increasingly some of our laws are coming from within the Assembly, so from individual MLAs. So you might have an individual MLA who has an idea for a new law and they'll introduce a private member's bill, or a committee, the statutory committees, in addition to scrutinising legislation, they can also introduce their own legislation in the form of a committee bill. So this describes the various ways in which the Assembly can exercise its legislative function. And the Assembly, regardless of whether the bill has come from the Assembly or come from the Executive, the Assembly is the final decision maker in terms of whether that bill is passed and goes to the Queen for royal assent. So final approval for all bills is granted by the Assembly. So that's the theory behind it. How has the Assembly performed in practice? Well, it has to be said that the legislative productivity of the Assembly has improved over time and compares quite favourably with the Scottish and Welsh parliaments. And when we're talking about legislative productivity, we mean um, the number of bills that the Assembly is able to get over the line. Now, that's only a rough proxy a rough indicator of, um, of progress and performance because some bills can be very substantial and important and other bills can be quite minor or, or technical. But nonetheless, if you look at the stats, um, the number of bills that the Assembly has, has got over the line, has approved, compares quite favourably with um, Scotland and Wales. So for example, 
The last full mandate, 2011 to 2016, the Assembly passed 67 bills. And, you know, and that was more than double what the Welsh Parliament passed. And it wasn't too far behind the Scottish Parliament. And the Scottish Parliament has had a lot more practice because they haven't had all the suspensions that we have had. Thinking more recently to uh, the last couple of years, the Northern Ireland Executive, if you remember, it collapsed in February 2022 when uh, the DUP withdrew its minister from the Executive Office. And that could have potentially scuppered a lot of pieces of legislation that were currently halfway through the legislative process in the Assembly. But that didn't happen. The Assembly was able to remain in existence because of um, reforms agreed in the New Decade New Approach Agreement. So the Assembly was still sitting, even though the Executive wasn't. And I would argue that during this time, those, those last few months before the Assembly rose for the new election, the Assembly really did come into its own. It really put its shoulder to the wheel, and it meant that those bills that were still on the scrutiny books, that they were scrutinised and they got passed and over the line. And some of those bills were on a number of important issues that would impact um, people's daily lives. The Assembly is also making greater use of its legislative initiation power so its proactive role is increasing um, and that is indicated by the number of private members bills that have been passed in the last few years um, and some of those private members bills have been on issues like integrated education domestic violence and um, free period products and um, things that will impact people's daily lives some legislation is passed and makes no difference to, to you or i or you might not notice anything some of these bills are on pretty important issues and they haven't come from the Northern Ireland Executive. They've come from the Northern Ireland Assembly in the form of private members bills. And private members bills are a kind of a sign of a, an ever more confident assembly that in addition to the legislation that's coming from the executive, the assembly thinks that it by itself has a legislative role to play. Um, and it, it, it exercises that role through private members bills. And if you look at the stats on this, um, from 2011 to 2016, the Assembly passed seven private members' bills. But then look at 2020 to 2022. Within that shorter period, nine private members' bills were passed. So you can only imagine, you know, if that if we hadn't have had the um, the institutional collapse, you know, we may have had a dozen or you know 15, maybe even more private members' bills passed. And as I say that. Private members' bills are the sign of a confident, policy, active legislature. Now, despite those strengths, there are some issues to think about. Um, as I said in the beginning, the statutory committees in the Assembly, they do have the power to introduce their own legislation. However, in reality, they have done so rarely. So from 2011 to 2016, for example, I think only one or two committee bills were passed during that entire mandate. Now, it's likely the case that the committees have been unable to pass more committee bills because they are constrained by a very busy schedule. They are required to take the legislative stage of, of bills that come from private members and bills that come from the executive. They have to scrutinise ministers. They're supposed to be initiating inquiries. They have a very, very busy schedule. And it's likely the case that they don't have uh, as much free time as they would like to develop legislative proposals. So this is an opportunity in the Assembly that has not been fully grasped because there are committees in other legislatures like Westminster that do not have this power and who would give their right arm to be able to introduce their own legislation. Um, so they would very much look on the Assembly with envy. But when we look at the, the, the statistics over time, this opportunity in the Assembly has really not been grasped. And although the private members bill story is a success story, there have been occasions when um, the assembly has struggled to cope with the level of interest in private members bills. So the assembly has not had sufficient resources to process those bills. And on, on at least one occasion, um, the speaker has had to temporarily suspend the private members function. So you would have MLAs who have new ideas, who are trying to improve an aspect of Northern Ireland society, who want to make the law but the speaker is saying, actually, no, you can't because we don't have the resources to do that and you need to wait. So that was a problem. Finally, then, to um, 
To summarise, the Assembly's legislative productivity, as I say, compares quite favourably with Scotland and Wales. And I think that's just not only demonstrated in terms of the number of bills over time, um, but also in terms of the increasingly proactive way in which the Assembly is going about its legislative role. We are seeing a, a fairly impressive increase in the number of private members' bills. And as I said, some of those private members' bills are on pretty important issues that would affect people's daily lives in Northern Ireland. On the other hand, the, you know, the policy-making potential of the statutory committees remains unfulfilled. Um, and as I also pointed out, at times, private members' bills in the Assembly have been a victim of their own success, where there have been so many of them that it has clogged up the system and the, the facility, the private members' facility, has had to be suspended. Uh, and in a modern legislature, that really shouldn't happen, because there could be MLAs with very good ideas who don't get to do anything about them. In terms of resources, um, just to finish up, you might want to read a, a short article I published a number of years ago. It's free to access online, and that looks at the different functions of the Assembly, but it does um, have a section that looks at legislative productivity. And you also might want to look at the Northern Ireland Assembly's uh, legislation page to see the different bills, for example, the private members have proposed and how many of them and on what subjects uh, the successful private members' bills have been on. Um, but we shall leave it there for now. Thanks very much for your attention.